Good afternoon, I'm Desiree Moses, coming to you live from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. We have an exciting day in the studio today. Our guests are Sammy Ray and the Friends. Welcome. <laughs> Sammy, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. We've got a great band here. Why don't you go ahead and introduce the Friends? All right, so we have Seabass Tutiboga from Virginia Beach, Virginia on percussion. We have James Quinlan on bass from Miami, Florida. We have, from the state of Connecticut, Will Lee on guitar. We have uh, Kellen Reese from Alabama on the alto saxophone. <laughs> every night, just every night I introduce you. We have uh, Max Zoy from Los Angeles, California on synthesizers and tenor saxophone. And we have Miss Debbie Chong from Singapore on keys and organ <laughs> and vocals. And I'm Sammy Ray, originally. Uh, from Connecticut, and now we're all in Brooklyn. All right, so when you first moved to New York, give us the rundown. So you all met in New York. Talk about that time, how you linked up, and give us a little rundown of the New York scene. Sure. That's a loaded question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I came to New York just before I turned 20, um, and I had this vision of starting a band. I knew I wanted a big, giant band of really talented individuals, so you could look at anybody on the stage and be like, wow, that person is as talented as the person next to them, which is hard to do in a city like New York when there are so many people and you don't know anyone at all, because um, I was very young and I hadn't really done that, the music thing yet. So the first two or so years was a lot of uh, open mics and going to venues that have music every night and um, cafes and things like that and seeing folks that were playing in bands and after a while you start to see, this is the case with you, you start to see the same bassist a couple nights in a row and go, wow, that guy's really good. Why don't we get coffee? And then you get coffee and you go, I would like to start a band. Would you like to join my ranks? <laughs> and eventually we all kind of, yes, yeah, so we just met on the New York City music scene and started playing shows and um, folks came in and out and eventually we solidified this group, which is Sammy Ray and the Friends. And pretty much all of us live in Brooklyn now and we love being a part of the New York City music scene. It's, really, it's a really diverse city for music, um, and I think we are a perfect testament to that because we come from so many different studies of music. We have folks from the, ja the study of jazz and folks from world music and folks from rock music and jam music and folk music and musical theater sprinkled on top. So I think we are a good picture of the New, New York City music scene, which is everybody plays everything yeah. in, in a lot of different ways. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you're mentioning sort of the multi-genre elements to the group, right. um, and you alone, you know, I read that you had written and recorded three albums by the time you were 18. You had a lot of musical influences too. Right. Do you want to talk a little bit about those? Sure. About the previous records or the musical influences? The influences that went into those three. When, when, when you're young and, and you're coming up and you're, you started on piano and then you're writing, you're writing those songs, three records by the time you're 18, it's pretty impressive. Right. Well, let's put uh, asterisks on either yeah. side of the word records because I was, uh, you know, like making them on my laptop with like a Walmart Logitech microphone in my bedroom. But I was getting into the building blocks of this is how you make a record. So it was good that I, you know, I guess had that practice. And by the time I got to New York and was dealing with real studios, we kind of had a clearer vision of what we wanted to do. And everybody else pretty much had already been in a studio. So it was a much easier process. Um, but in terms of influences, I was always really influenced by really, really big rock bands, which I've said, I think, before, was the challenge with this was I want to put a lot of people on stage. I want it to feel like a party. I want us to look like a family. So I was really big into like Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, Queen, which isn't that many people, but it's a really big sound, Electric Light Orchestra, Fleetwood Mac, uh, the Doobie Brothers, the Allman Brothers, that, that sort of stuff, rock bands. Um, and in addition to that, I had this totally sidebar obsession with the great female vocalists of jazz music. Um, so Sarah Va Vaughn and Ella Fitzgerald and all them. So yeah, we have this, again, all goes to say a very eclectic sound here. But I think um, what's special about the friend sound is you can't really pin it down. You can hear these influences and everybody gets a chance to shine and somehow it all makes sense when you put it in the pot and stir it up together. <laughs> Well, let's hear it. What song would you guys like to start out with? All right, so we'll do a tune uh, first from our debut EP, The Good Life. This is a song called Kick It To Me. And it starts with Mr. Max Soy. Max, you ready? All right. Are we ready? All right. Ready? <laughs> All right, Max. One, two, you know what to do. Too 
hurting in the worst way, singing the blues all on my own in a dark room. Nobody there, all on my own in a dark room. But nowadays we got a lot of good news. You finally kicked the cigarettes. I ain't been singing the blues nearly as much since I've been living with you. Love me too much, and I say you kick it to me and I'll make it better for you. Kick it to me, I don't make you better for it. Kick it to me and I'll make it better for you Kick it to me, I gon' make you better for it I said, hey, kick it to me, I gon' make it better for you Kick it to me, I gon' make you better Friends live on WNRN. They're playing the Jefferson Theater in Charlottesville tomorrow night. Doors at 7, shows at 8. They'll also be at Red Wing Roots Music Festival later this summer. So you guys released an EP last year called Let's Throw a Party. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, it really goes along with the ethos of the band that we were just talking about. And, and as we just saw, it is like a party in here. So talk a little bit about this idea of having, you know, a fun community celebration you know, on stage and having that channeled every night. You know, you released this in 2021. We're coming out of the pandemic. Right. There were a lot of different album concepts that came out of the pandemic. And I think Let's Throw a Party is one way to look at that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yes. So something that's really big about this project is we are hugely focused on our community and the folks mm -hmm. that listen to us and support us. And we refer to Sammy Ray and the Friends as... We are the friends, but also everyone who participates is the friends. So if you're streaming music or you're coming to the shows or buying merch or buying tickets, you're part of the friends as well. So what we work to cultivate in the live space is um, just just an energy where everybody feels 
safe and comfortable to be themselves and like dance how they want to dance and dress how they want to dress and they know that they're going to be taken care of and when they walk out hopefully they have this sense of optimism about them because we were able to spend this time together uh making each other feel seen and having a great time um so when we were in the, you know, the deep throes of 2020, um, everybody obviously had to figure out, every project had to figure out how to um, safely make music and also how to tell stories that were gonna resonate with their audience. And I knew that a lot of folks would come out of that time period with like ballady records and things that were focused on uh, maybe sadness or solitude or, or on the other side of the spectrum, like hope and the future. And those records are wonderful, we love them. and, and you know, the world needed those, but what we wanted to give everybody with this EP, especially with the song Let's Throw a Party, which is very much about um, facing kind of things out of our control, chaos and growth and aging and the passage of time, looking at those things with gratitude and being able to kind of laugh at them and not take them too seriously. Those are some of the themes that are peppered throughout the rest of the EP too. Um, and we kind of just had this thought of, right, well, if nothing's in our control and we can't really do anything, then we can do anything we want. Yeah. So we may as well throw a party, right? So our hope was when that EP came out that it would give our audience, this community that we love so much, 35 minutes or so to kind of escape from whatever it was they were worrying about and thinking about and throw a party in their kitchen or their living room with their roommates or their dog or what have you. So hopefully we encapsulated all that in an EP and gave it to the audience and they opened it up and it was a party. So, yeah. Does that answer the question at <laughs> yes, all? that's great. Well, you know, it's funny because you're recording this Let's Throw a Party in a time when you couldn't necessarily tour and right. now you've been back on the road. So, right. I'm assuming the reception is exactly what, what you anticipated. Yeah. Everyone's ready to get back out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we kind of, I, I don't even know if intentionally we teed that up, but it was here's this EP called Let's Throw a Party and then suddenly when we were able to tour again, it was like, let's throw the biggest party ever every night so we had you know costumes were crazy and we're giving people gifts and there was glitter and sequins and things everywhere so hopefully um the audience who experienced that tour felt like you know what we had all just gone through communally we could come and experience something a little more uplifting uh yeah it was it was a wonderful tour it was probably our first um i would say we were generally green and new to touring before 2020 showed up. So when we got an opportunity to really tour hard, travel a lot, play show after show after show, um, I, I think we did a great job. I think the audience had a great time. And it certainly felt like a, a party from our side of the stage every night. So hopefully that resonated. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it tomorrow night at the Jefferson Theater in Charlottesville. Doors at 7, the show's at 8. We'll also see you guys again at Red Wing, which is one of our favorite parties here in Central Virginia. Yeah. Um, why don't you guys play one more for us? We'd love to hear it. All right, so uh, we're gonna do a tune called Follow Me Like the Moon. This is a single that we just recently released. Um, it's a song that we've had for a very long time. I wrote this song when I was 16. Didn't really make sense until about 10 years later when the band showed up um, and we breathed a new life into it. So um, this is, to, we're actually just starting our uh, leg of this tour called the Follow Me Like the Moon tour, uh, promoting this tune, so. I hope you like it. You got it? Here we go. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Set it straight, no, no, I just can't place it And I can't erase it And I can't stop thinking about it Oh, what a scene When you can't seem to say what you mean Oh, what a shame When you've only got yourself to blame And I try to shake it off And then I try to sweep it off But you still follow me like the moon And then you follow me like the moon And then I try to shake it off then I try to sleep it out But you still follow me like the moon And then you follow me like the moon
shake it off Then I try to sleep it off You still follow me like the moon song that we've been loving here on WNRN, Follow Me Like the Moon, oh. Sammy Ray and Friends live from Inner Ear Studios in Richmond. Can't wait to see the full set tomorrow night at the Jefferson Theater in Charlottesville. Aaron and the Wildfire opening up, doors at 7, the show's at 8, and then we'll see Sammy Ray and the Friends later in the summer for Red Wing Roots Music Festival. Sammy, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you so much for having thank us. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Big thanks to my WNRN colleagues here, Lauren and Patrick. Thanks to everybody at In Your Ear Studios. Carlos, Andrea, Eric, Billy, Charlie, and Julian. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs>